we're starting now. I should, I should put the mic away, I usually do it. Hey guys, what's, what's up guys? You can't see my face. Is it too loud and quick? No, it's way too loud. Oh, it works, sorry. Is this too loud? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Come get a seat. Uh, Awkward silence, yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, how many people are actually here and they know what they're here for? <laughs> Show a hand. Yeah, I expect you to say that. Is that the one I'm holding on that side over there? That's all few. Alright, alright. So, uh, real quick, my name is Chris. Uh, I run a podcast called Peace Mode uh, NY Deadcast. It's based off of, well, you know, Fan of the Walking Dead, Fear of the Walking Dead, anything in that kind of genre. And uh, I usually do live. Video cast with actors in the show. James? Oh, hey. Hey, what's up? It's true. I can, I can confirm that he does those things. I do do those things. Um, so, thanks to the fans, uh, actually, New York Comic Con put out a tweet 2018 about what your favorite podcast was for that year. And thanks to the people that follow me um, and enjoy what I do, I ended up winning this. So, this is. Uh, this is Thank you. Uh, it's, it really touched home, believe me, because you know, when you do it, you do it for yourself. And uh, this is this is an amazing feeling to be at your Comic Con doing this right now. So thanks for sharing it with me. Appreciate it. Um, I brought some co-hosts with me. This is Meg the Geek. She goes by. You were, just, you were just saying how long you were doing this journey. Um, I actually only started the whole Meg the Geek like alter ego about six months ago, and probably the best decision I ever made because my life has changed so much by helping this guy. And I can't reach him, but that guy over there. And it's just I'm loving this. It's here, coming on. I've been spectating all these years, and to be on stage with that shit behind me, like holy shit. <laughs> I've been in New York. I'm 42. I've been in New York my whole life, and this is my first time ever attending, and it's just. Weird that my first time attending is I'm, uh, I'm doing a panel, so that's the same problem. Yeah. Uh, I have Dave, Dave Cameo here. He does the podcast. Hey guys. Dave, what's your podcast? What's my podcast called? Uh, how many of you guys have heard of uh, Swalking Dead? Okay, so there's a couple. So you're going to know when I say we are Squawking Dead. That's how I start off every show. And basically, we're a podcast that pulverizes episodes of AMC. Walking Dead and mm -hmm. the Walking Dead. Can I get a round of applause for those two shows? Because that's why you're here! So, what, what I do, and, and it's kind of like why, how Chris and I got together, is kind of this weird relationship between the fandom and probably because of this contest, we just got mixed up and swirled around the circle of like, of NYCC, and then like I said, come on to the show, let's just do this thing together. And, uh, Actually, that was a while ago, wasn't it? Like in February or something. Yeah, it's great. And so um, we started off with two hosts, and then we ended up getting three hosts. Ashley Wyman, the 2018 Talking Dead winner, is a host on our show. Uh, we got Meg the Geek, we got Rachel Cosmobomb09, and uh, Chris. And then so... Did I miss anybody? Carol. Carol. Well, Carol. That, was the, that was the second person, yes. <laughs> OG Squawkin' D, Carol G, a New York native. And um, so yeah, that's what we do, and it's like one part uh, absurdity, we're making fun of everything, including ourselves, and then the other part of it is really uh, just uh, diving really, 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 really deep into the content. Yeah. To an absurd degree. Really so three hours later. A lot of absurdity. Three, three hours, a lot of really three hours for sure. But that's what we do, yeah. So if you like that sort of thing, Or, or bmnydeadcast.com? Why not? Yeah. Thanks, guy. Or is there a Meg the Geek? <laughs> no, I'm thinking of it, though. <laughs> but there is a Meg the Geek on all the media, so. With us tonight, we have Oscar Rodriguez III. He is a uh, artist. He, for, he does a lot of different comic book style, Walking Dead things. Um, he's also uh, partakes in actually working on the show, uh, creature actor, and someone 
fellas, right? What else do you do? I whisper a little bit. Anybody fans of whispers? Yeah, they like the whispers. <laughs> like, you like that? We do the storyline. We talk low, walk slow, and we kill everybody. Yeah. So keep your eyes open. Yeah, and then with that, we have James Chen, who is a part of the Hilltop community. Uh, we haven't seen James in a while, but we know that he's still alive-ish. Ish. Ish. Alive-ish. I'll go find out. And then Elise, last time we saw you, <laughs> so it was unfortunate. I'm gonna cry. Yeah. Is anybody up to date with the show and might, what might have happened to Elise? Wait, is anybody here not up to date? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We're gonna get some spoilers. We, oh, by the way, no questions about season 10, obviously, because we have no two season people 10. here that are still possibly involved with the show. Two people, people to my left. Just so you know. Uh, if, if you're not up to date, uh, and, you, and you don't mind a spoiler, uh, at least how did things work out? <laughs> I, I, I lost my head a little bit. You lost your head? Somebody cuts it off and sticks it on a pike. Where's the soccer? On top of it. It was a sad day. I think a few of my friends had something to do with that. <laughs> yeah. That's why they're not sorry. Yeah. Yeah. We kill everybody. <laughs> I told you that's what we do. We had to put the whisper over here and you know the pike person over here. Pike person. You were also uh, you're also the wife of someone on the show. Yes, I was one of uh, Megan's favorite. It was his favorite wife. His favorite wife. <laughs> <It's unfortunate. laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how? So, what was that like being the, the wife of, of me, or one of the wives, the favorite wife? Um. Well, in and that with, world. It, okay. It was. And, <laughs> it, it was definitely interesting. I mean, that was the that was the first time that I had gone on to a show that had such an established family. I came in at the beginning of season seven. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, I I'd come on for pilots and things, or done three episodes or something here and there. Coming on with a you know, show that really is a family was daunting and a little bit scary. And Jeff had also just killed, like, I hated him. I was oh, like, dude, I'm like, I don't know, you just killed Glenn. <laughs> I'm not telling the trivia team. But we had, a, we had an interesting first meeting in the hair and makeup trailer. And that, that set us up for a little bit of. And they they put um, my name is Elise Nicole before they put my three names on the on the call sheet, which I didn't ask for. His so name is Jeff Morgan. And then I came in. And he's like, Oh, you're you're my wife. You're one of my wives. And I was like, Yeah. He's like, It was really Elise Nicole before. It's my Frankie. And I was like, Yeah. I don't I don't know why they put all three of my names. I look like such a dick. You know. Like, and, and you know, he's just like. And your face to face with JDM for the first then, time. And then, then, it, then it registers. Right. Oh, oh you are. Right. But, right. Big yeah. And then he was great. <laughs> he gave me shit for like three minutes and then he was great after that. We had a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, James, what's going on? <laughs> it's time to be so vague when I ask you questions. Like, so what's going on? Uh, my name is Steven. Steven Yoon. Thank you. Uh, I missed that rant. And if you guys didn't realize, uh, that's really way. Uh, that's who everyone on Instagram calls me. They're <laughs> like, oh my god, I, I can't believe you're still alive. I'm like, god, let's watch the show. Get some more Asian friends. Um, <laughs> What's going on? Um, a lot, man. I mean, we wrapped season nine a year ago. Um, I think since then I did a, uh, a little like a local convention that Oscar hosted, which was really fun in Sonoy, and uh, did an amazing cast with you, my man, which was so awesome. Um, you know, it's just been really exciting, kind of interacting with like fans on social media, and uh, I try to stay busy, just auditioning a lot, doing a recurring role in the show called FBI on CBS, which is fun. And, uh, cool. hey, what's up? Yeah. It's a great show, really great like cast and crew. Missy um, Peregrine, Steve Zaki, you know, Milton Williams, they're awesome. Um, yeah, we're in the, we just aired like season two um, this uh, two days ago. So that's pretty much it. Um, 
Do some work. <laughs> Audio <laughs> books as well. Well, uh, really, uh, yeah. yeah. You can listen to your talk on audio. You can, yeah. And all kinds of crazy voices. Both of you. That was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of books are these? <laughs> um, well, the last one was uh, uh, post-apocalyptic young adults alien invasion, uh, kind of like teenagers uh, surviving the apocalypse, but also finding love and uh, <laughs> sounds familiar. Sexual, uh, sexual and personal with identity with aliens. Uh, yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> So it's a little bit everything. Auditioning for theater, you know. Very nice. Yeah. Does, uh, so does anybody think that James was by chance? Admit it, admit it. It's okay. Yeah. Any of that confusion going on? Yeah, it's okay. Just the right. Said I think I think that person was Asian who made that <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for James? Uh, show related, obviously don't involve season 10. Yeah, I think there's a mic over there. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, there's a mic over here. If you have a question, just step up to the mic and you can ask your question. Everybody's, everybody's yeah, loud. Shot. I guarantee everybody's just like, they have those questions, but no one wants to get up. Hey, I also wanted to congratulate on your appearance on Iron Fist. Oh, thanks, bro. That was yes. awesome. Are you coming back to that? I think there's another season coming up. You know, there's a lot up in the air because <laughs> Disney Plus came out, and you know that whole drama? It's like, oh, well, so you know, Netflix pulled all the uh, Defenders series shows. <laughs> I was waiting for everybody to do all that once. Um, but no, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was awesome working with, um, you know, Jessica Henwick and um, Finn. So um, we had a lot of great talent on that set. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Just remember, yeah, if you do have a question for James, ask before 7 o'clock. Not at 7 one because he's going to have to go. Calm down, calm down. Form a civil line. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little well, like, so awesome. yeah. yeah. straight to the back. Right. Four minutes away. It's a hot mic over there. It's a It's a lot. Oscar. Yes, I'm here. Hi. What are you? What's going on, man? What's uh, uh, so you're you're on the Walking Dead. Yes. And uh, so, can you describe kind of like just a quick day in the life of what you actually do and go through as being that? Yeah, it's uh, getting up really early sometimes. And, be in there all day and makeup and masks and direction. It's hot. It's all hit very hot. It's I think hot. our hottest day this year was, I think it clocked out at 116 degrees, and I think we had to pop them off, put them on every 10 minutes or so. Um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun, man. It's, I'm I'm happy. I'm excited. You know, going from the artist to you know being on the show. Now I'm going into you know season ten, so hey, yeah, man, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So I'm excited. Has it's anybody like a dream come true for me? Has anybody ever seen any Oscars or, or have it? You know, uh, I see somebody in the Ooh, yeah, somebody said yes. Well, wow, thank you. Hi. Hi. Are we have familiar. Oh yeah. Hi, hey, hey. mom. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> I got your money in a little bit. <laughs> It's very exciting, it's enlightening, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, some call times are very early, and like I said, you work very long days, and um, yeah, I, I don't know, I mean, just 
very happy to be a part of the show. Like I started drawing Walking Dead art years ago, and then it's like full circle to actually be one of the main bad guys, like core on top of it. So I'm watching everybody. You see somebody with a mask, it could be the red hat. Hey, that guy with the red hat over there? The one red hat rule in the building, take it off. Actually, that's why I need my money. It's Oscar's red hat. Oscar, tell, Sir. tell everybody how this shit happened with you. How did, how did this whole thing, how did you become a whisperer? I just... What happened? I called out. I mean, I did like, I, 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 I sent my picture in, and this way, that way, in a, in a, you know, a shot, but I think just the recognition of going to the Walker Stalkers and, uh, drawing. What's the oh, name? I'm, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, but <laughs> I have a lot of friends. Uh, I mean, I could shout out to, uh, Jeff Wagner and uh, CJ Rhodes. Uh, they were pivotal for you know me getting and, and, and being a big part of the show. So shout out to those two guys and many others. I have a lot of friends. I made a lot of friends. Very excited. So. Hi, and of course Elise. Oh, we, no, we, I have a question. Oh, yes, I thought it was all there. Now I've been here. Uh, really? <laughs> no, I was just like, screw you for killing me. But, um, I'm sorry. No, so on on my last day, I had met the, I had met Samantha Morton, who plays Alpha. Yes. On the, on the call sheet, you know, the main, the, like, the big ones. They yeah, yeah. Place, the star, you don't know. So I had no idea who was playing Alpha, and when I saw, I'm a huge fan of hers, when I saw her walk in, after we did the that, are, were you in the bar in the scene? Uh, no, I wasn't there for that uh, scene. I, I was part of that episode, just not that <laughs> scene. Thing, like, like, real life happens and full time stuff happens, so I gotta go, no, I can't make it. But and it's you, very far away from home for me, so. Same, yeah. Same. Did, you, did you meet her and work with her? I have, I've worked with her, yes. Because she walked into the room in the scene and I saw her. Samantha is like, oh, shit. She's nothing like, of course, that character. She portrays her uh, brilliantly. She's, she's, she's evil, but no, Sam is a delight. Yeah. Of course, uh, she's from the UK, correct? So she yeah. has this amazing, just everything she's about her. Yeah, so it's, it's always fun to have her on set. She calls us her lovelies. Hey, my lovelies. And we take our mask off. She's learned a lot of us our names. and. So we do, we have those moments, and she is amazing. She's brilliant, so. And, and Ryan, I've got to, Ryan Harris, another one that is this towering monster, and he takes it off, and it's like, hey guys, you know, ponytail, and so yeah, it's, it's just been a, just amazing. Yeah, I'd like to ask, How's that go? I'd like to ask James if he's met any of these people, but I can't, so there's that. Thanks, James. What? <laughs> I, 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 was, I was caught up in the uh, visuals of that amazing description. It's hard to use the descriptives. Like, how do you like describe something that I think everybody would love to do one time? I mean, for me, I thought I was just going to go do some background work, and it turned into I'm this core guy. You know, I'm, I'm one of these main guys. So it's it's wow. Yeah, they bring a lot of those yeah, guys yeah. back. Yeah, and it's, 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 you know, making the decision, do I, can I, you know, is home life gonna, um, so, I always want to, like, that's something that I strive to, you know, I want to be there, I want to make the episode, but, you know, what? it was there or here, so, I'm here today, guys, and Chelsea, thank you for having me. Thank you, Chris. That was a real conversation we had, too. He called me so stressed out. Oscar's like, dude, they want me to work. And I'm like, well, I work, man. Like, I get it. But uh, he, chose, he chose us. So thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you. And I remember when you got this, and I think I was one of the first people you said, hey, yeah. I want you. Yeah. So it means a lot. I had to be here. So I just want to say thank you. And everybody up here, thank you, guys, for your time. Thank you. I have a question for you, Oscar. Yes, sir. Do you get like a special? Does Samantha give out like special whisper names for everybody? Are you like Inky and somebody else? No, I mean I, there might be one or two on set that um, she's really close with. The ones that are they always get to be like right there uh, next to her. I think that first twenty. I was part of the first twenty, but that first maybe five or six that were established. Those are the ones that are really connected with her. And, I think there's a few like uh, girl whispers or lady whispers that they her they find it. Yeah. Uh, she has those little names, but we're all her lovelies. Because that's her me. <laughs> she's just she's amazing. Like this man, I can't say enough. She can't say enough. She's amazing to work with. 
all of them, everybody. I haven't had a bad experience. So I know I know a lot of a lot of people always talk about the show when Andrew was there, when Andy was there, and how when you when you came to that show, you were a part of that, and the experience that he kind of made for everyone who, mm -hmm. who came on for the first time. So a lot of people who might not, you know, if you're just here hanging out and whatever, but uh, it really like when you talk about the Walking Dead family. Andrew Lincoln like really established that, especially for the people who were part of the show. When you came to the show, he it, it was it was an instant welcoming into a family. I mean, can you vouch for that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I remember I had a because <clears throat> Cal has a kind of a very specific haircut. It's like very, it's like a short military cut on the side that goes straight up. It's pretty accurate to the graphic novel. <clears throat> and so I had a hair and makeup test uh, the day before I the first day of shooting, and that took honestly almost an hour because they were really being specific about how they would make it. And while I was kind of hanging out waiting for approval, um, they introduced me to Andrew. He was, this was the scene in season six where like uh, they they come across an overturned jeep and they meet Jesus and. Um, uh, Andrew was just chilling at a chair. It's like, oh, hello, Andrew. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's just the most. Say <laughs> hello. Well, better than that. But yeah. <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> he's. <laughs> he's. Uh, did I what, did I make it too cocky? He was like, hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 Dude, I saw you in Mary Poppins. You're so. <laughs> <laughs> he's like very genteel, um, but then you know, fast forward, we're actually shooting. It's the episode where he arrives to Hilltop for the first time. Jesus brings him and the whole like core family. It's, you know, Stephen and Maggie and uh, Daryl and Carol and Michonne. We're they're all there, and um, we're there for the first time ever. Like, we don't know what's going on. Like the levels. I like, you guys can speak to. It's like the levels of. Like security and secrecy and confidentiality, they're so deep, like, you don't know do anything. Um, so we get there, we don't know what's happening, we don't know what the situation is, so we're like really getting ready to shoot this thing, and Andrew just steps up, and he's like, all right, this is what's happening, and he's doing it as Rick Grimes. He's, he's speaking improvisation as Rick Grimes, like, all right, guys, this is what's happening. Like, you've been living here forever, and like, these guys like, are coming up to your door. Like, it's us, but you don't know it's us. You, you think it could be like these savior people who just like murdered like, a teenager in front of you. So when you when we come to the front of the, these gates, like, you have to be so vigilant. Like, you don't know who it is. Um, it's like, let's go! And he did one of these, come on, let's go! And, uh, that, that was up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, but no, he's a really nice, a really nice guy. He set the stage, you know, pretty much the tone for the, for the scene. Uh, for the scene, and, you know, I think for the show, too. They, they always say this for, you know, shows or movies, they, they, and just as it's true in general for any organization, like leadership is like top down, right? Like you've, you follow the example of the people above you, especially the one at the top, or the captain or the QB, and I think from day one, season one, I, uh, I, I, w I wasn't there, but I can imagine, especially from what I've heard anecdotally, like Andrew has always been like uh, a real amazing role model. Yeah. And, and, now, yeah. and, and now you're just there, you think. I think at that time, like, the, the kingdom of the hilltop kind of 
there was a lot of intermingling of their communities, and like the further the time jump went, the more you could see that they kind of shared uh, like different parts of their culture, like their garb, their armor. Um, like a, I see like a Diane like right there. Yeah. 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 makes all of those things from scratch. Yeah. Like the forge in the hilltop community is an actual functional forge. Like you'll see them fire it up between between takes. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, it was cool. Like the coolest moments I think were carrying around like armor, handgun, knife, spear, like uh, sometimes like a, maybe it's like a semi-automatic as well, so arm to the teeth. And you got to have some of the cooler lines interacting with Xander Berkeley, the late uh, Gregory. And if anybody remembers him, I mean, no one really liked him on the show, even though, you know, he's, he tried to be a good guy, I think. I think it was in him, but for the wrong reasons. Obviously, just for his own self, you know, selfishness. Totally, yeah. But you got some good dialogue with him. Yeah, um, I guess because they were, they were telling the story that like Cal has known Gregory for quite some time ever since uh, Gregory, Gregory was running Hilltop, and um, I feel like Cal is like, a loyal guy, he's dutiful to the protection of that community, so he wasn't necessarily going to call call him out, but when I think Maggie started to take over the Hilltop and Gregory's kind of like hold on the whole thing started to go south, his behavior got more and more... Like selfish, right? Yeah, and then I got to call him out on some things. Anybody here who actually like a fan of the show and watches it, uh, anybody remember what Cal said to uh, Gregory at the gate about a, a certain type of food and a little girl, right? A little girl. Yeah. Anybody remember their call? What type of food it was? Anyone? It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a. Tall, no, day I can do the impression. Price. I see some people like saying, "Yeah, they don't. that would be fun." I know Jess is going to draw her sorghum pancakes. It's right there. It's right there. It's something like that. Yeah. That was a terrible thing. Is that a Xander presentation? That would be a Nebraska doesn't see that. It's something like that. Because that was like very. I can't do it right now. That was really sweet. Alright, so you. So how about Dave? You do Xander, and then. I would do Xander. James, do Cal. I mean, if anybody can do Cal, it could be. I mean, the hair is different. You should be able to get out pretty well. Uh, you should give them a, uh, you know, good. Yeah. Oh, Let's go. Do it when you try. <laughs> no. I think you got to say, uh, well, you got to be Maggie. You gotta That's say, like doing a love song uh, in, in front of the person. person. There's two women in front of the crowd. Yeah, no problem. It's right. definitely not going to be me. All right, we're going to do this or not? Because it would be cool. No. All right, all right. I tried, guys. The dialogue is I'm gone. Just, I'm for the audience. We lost the 100% mom. And there, hey. Are you ready to read the part, ways? Is it time? Oh, it's time. It's time. I'm not kicking you off. No, no, no. I just, I have the uh, timekeeper. Thank you, timekeeper. Yeah. Is that big? Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. You're awesome. Thank you guys for your favorite show. Even send a personal alarm to make sure it wasn't late. Big things. Big things. Yeah. Give it up for James Chen again, guys. Getting close. That one working. We're good. So, yeah, Dave. 
Hi. Hi. Yes. You can ask me questions. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you should be so quiet. <laughs> I know. I'm usually the talking one on the show. So yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask Elise a question because I know that every actor gets a little blurb about their character. I kind of wanted to get a peek in yours. Metaphorically. Depends on when. Well, the, the latter part, mostly because we kind of didn't get too much of a lease on Spring Hill before we saw her go. No, yeah, it was like, very sad. Yeah. But I, did, I had a kid. Yeah, that, and like, there must have been some hint at what happened during that time. No. No, no I, I, I had a, some sort of partner and adopted a... a Parentless child that was very small. <laughs> and then we then we have the time jump and you don't actually see it in the show, but we they, they did cast a much older version of my daughter that was the same age as me. <laughs> and uh, I think that's why you probably why you didn't see it. Very mature Frankie. Yeah. I'm just like, Me just me, and I'm like, it's okay, sweetheart. <laughs> it looks odd. Doesn't, doesn't yeah, it doesn't have a just now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then just, I think, uh, we sold it though. I mean, really. Well, I, I, I don't, Frankie and, and Eugene just remain good friends, and he's kind of the one person that really gives a crap about her. I mean, everybody cares about everybody after the time jump, it's all very nice and loving. But yeah, Frank and Eugene, I mean, he's the last one to ask About where she is, is and, and if anybody's seen her, and that she's headless and dead. So, <laughs> I can't watch that episode. Oh my god. I mean, how many people can watch that episode over and over again with their pants off? No? Okay. Anyway, nobody, right? Hold no, no, no. on. Just I, checking. I, I would. Because it's you. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, no other reason. Yeah. I can honestly say that that scene really didn't affect me. Like, wow. Okay. Like, it wasn't like, oh, no. In our next segment of Chris Hates Everything. I, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it just wasn't. It just wasn't anybody that like really personally affected me from the show. Like, it was, not even Henry. Not even Frank. Yeah. I don't know. Henry looks. Not even I would have. I would have liked Henry myself. Yes, Henry. Like, I, I had no <laughs> love for Henry. I'm sorry. Well, Lana, yeah, but, like, when you have people that you kind of, like, expected, kind of knew, it takes away from it. Like who? And you had these expectations, how? You just, when you, when you do research, okay, you know? I mean, you can't Not that people need information or anything like that, that would be bad and weird. That doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, there's been, there's been scenes where I know people, like, Meg says she can't watch it, and I'm just like, why? I was, it really didn't face me. I thought it was really, though, and then I just cried. And then I just lose. And then you quit. And then I quit. <laughs> she hasn't quit. Meg usually quits every show. It's kind of right, yeah. You know, man, we're going to get her to anyway. Watching it go across. Everybody's relevant, so. Nobody knew everybody. Oh, no, I'm saying I'm just Everybody, we were all, you know, um, like four episodes prior, we were all sitting in one of those house houses in Alexandria and um, Ring Ring. And these are like real houses that are just empty, and the people actually live there, and they just get stuff and they sit there for three hours and while we shoot a scene. It's really ridiculous, but. Everyone's just sitting in a circle, just sort of like, who's it going to be? Because it's supposed to be Rosita, and the yeah. one of them is supposed to be Rosita in the comics. Yeah, 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 for sure. And no, nobody knew. Nobody knew. It's like the worst episode of The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It was hot. <laughs> Here's your fight. So, because uh, I, I know normally the way it works is you get that phone call. Yeah, nobody did. Nobody got phone Everybody found that. I think, um, I know that. Uh, Alana found out a little bit before Kaylin did, like maybe a day, and then everybody was a little like, wait, what? When did you find out? Uh, when I got the script. Oh, okay. I mean, they, they, they'll get there, they would think, 
it went like in three day um, periods. Like right. a couple of people got theirs and did get you know a call from right. Scott or from a Greg or somebody and Ellen and, and Kaylin both found out it took like two days before we shot. Wow. Like yes. Wow. So it two, two or three days and I can't go uh, I don't know how it, a week a week to two days. <laughs> don't quote me on <laughs> yeah. yeah, for, for those of you who don't know, then you'll get a phone call from Scott Gimple. And usually you don't, like, as soon as your phone goes off, you know exactly what it's for. And I've talked to, like, so many, like, actors from the show, and they know, like, when the phone goes off, they just stare at it, and they're like, damn it. You just don't answer. Yeah. It's like, no. You just avoid it. You're like, show up on set. What do you mean? I'm not clicking my name. So <laughs> you killed me when? <laughs> What if we get like a call from Scott Gimple? We're not gonna have a show. <laughs> so what do you think? Do I like, like it? It's kind of like the ring where you know, like you watch the video. Is it the ring I'm thinking of? Yeah, Scott Gimple kind of shows up and you're Yeah. That happens. Pure tet in a week. It's all a little whisper. So no, it, it happens right on the spot. It's like, okay, you, you're, you're dying. I'm like, okay. So yeah, you I'm find out five minutes prior. Yeah, and Connie shoots me in the head. Yeah, my voice. That happened. Yeah, my voice ain't even my voice. It's like I go, Ugh, and then you hear, Ooh. I'm like, who did they use? They could have just used me. Because I did a really powerful from the diaphragm. Ugh. And the director's like, no, nah, try it again. And they, they can call me Oscar.com on set. I'm like, so I did, you know, you, you do the takes a thousand times. And she says, yeah, that last one That's was one. good. And you're like, I didn't And do then it. I watched the scene, it's like two seconds, and it's like, Ugh. I'm like, well, where, where, where did they, I know they go back and add sounds, but I who was the lucky one to go, oh. They didn't even hear anything. I mean, I, you know, I, yeah, it was, it, I, didn't think, I don't think you give it. I read, I read this. Yeah, I, I watch it every once in a while. I'm like, oh, it's, are you sure? Yeah. You watch it? He watches it. Well, I'm like, that. I go back. I, I have it on, like, on. Uh, how long did you wait to watch to see that final scene? Did you? Because I know some people wait, and there are some people don't even bother watching. Um, I wanted to know like the Yeah, they're, 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 they're
they don't get to take that yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, right? yeah that's I yeah. teach about that jazz. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I have an important question. Um, do you get to go home at night and like sleep with it? Like just on your own? Oh no, 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 man. You turn that in, that's like you yeah, you, you get to play that and play with that on set. And then you, 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 like, you turn it in, yeah, you, 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 that's it. It's like, uh-huh. That's kind of disappointing. Like when you were in high school. Or that's how I see it. You know, you have to turn that ID in for that basketball, and then you want that driver's. It's kind of like that deal, so. Get the whole pass. Um, yeah, you give them a hall pass for the night. Right? Uh, you clean it up for your night? After five minutes. Oh, man. Five minutes. Wow, that's a Where'd that go? I told you it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you it's New York. Can we just sit down? <laughs> yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah. Let's try back in the yard. Well, you can quit. No, we're just sitting in the fire. Let's look it out. We had two ladies in the middle. I know. We don't care. So, if what happened didn't happen with the fights, where do you think Elise will submit? Where do you think your character would get out? Um, just. Trying to be normal. I think that's sort of what everyone wants in, in this, at this point. It's just like, can we just live, please? <laughs> can we just can't yeah. just breathe? Would you go back? No, I don't think she would. She tried to kill him. That's true. I mean, that was the, that was my introduction to the show. Was my character trying to kill her husband? I figured with you know me and Megan. I mean, if it were me. That's, that's a whole different story. That's true. That's true. Being her, I think. <laughs> <laughs> when you had to read for that part, what was, was it like something completely different? Like when you went to like, what did you plan to read for that? Like, like, I, some people get scripts with like, you're shopping in the like, grocery store. <laughs> I read for the show twice before I booked it. And I read for uh, the, the Sherry, the original, like, his yeah. wife, that you meet, I think. Um, wife. Wife. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I read for that. Scott Gimple emailed me, or actually, my agent emailed me in the middle of the night. I read for it, left for the beach, and then, like, in some gross motel in Myrtle Beach. And it's two in the morning, and she's like, You need to get this Scott Gimple. Just Scott We just got an email from Scott Gimple. You need to redo it right now, because they actually didn't get it. <laughs> but, like, it ruined, it ruined my whole vacation. <laughs> and then I read for and like Madison, she's in the ocean, she's in Oceanside, the main, the young, the young, really, really cute one in the Oceanside, she's really long here. Oh, uh, Sydney Park. Yes, 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 oh gosh, she's so good. But I read for that, and then from reading before that, they cast me. She plays Cindy. Yes. Yeah. Sydney so, plays Cindy. Odd. And when looking at it, I, I had no idea. They were like, well, you could just be on for a day. Uh, we don't know. We don't know anything. Yeah, we right. could not even say anything. And yeah. then three, three, years, three years later, here we are. And that happens a lot on that show. Like, you'll go and you know, you're basically in that one episode. And you're, yeah. that's it. Like, ah, here's my appearance. I'm dead. It's, it's odd. Yeah. It's odd. But Scott has been, Scott's really, really awesome. He was, he I have a, nice. I got a real quick funny story about it. We were, so, I had James and uh, Peter Zimmerman, who plays Eduardo from the Hilltop. They were both on my podcast together, and we're talking, and we kind of dove into a topic that might have went too deep about The Walking Dead at the time. So we all started joking about how Scott Gimple monitors and watches everybody's activity and stuff. I'm not even joking, we lost Peter's connection to Skype like that. <laughs> and I was like, well, they just took Peter out, Peter's gone, everybody. Yeah, and I, like, I mean, and then you get into a call and back, and it was just funny because we're sitting here literally talking about how stuff like that happened. And, I mean, believe it or not, Peter's gone on the street. Uh, well, give him a He's got CIA connections. Yeah. He's, he's in it. He's connected. Yeah. Do we have, uh, all right, so before we wrap up, any questions for Oscar? Anything about The Walking Dead? Got something there. What do we got? You, want, you have to come around to the microphone. You gotta run. Sprint. Please walk slow when I'm ready and state your name clearly. Yeah. Or I'm not answering anything. What's your name? Where are you from? I know her. I know you. Yeah. Who's your father? What does he do? Mark's it's not a tumor. 
Are you, is it a question for Chris? Or? It's for Elise. Oh, Elise. Hi. Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm from Long Island. Nice to meet you. I uh, was wondering what it was like to film the barn scene because watching it makes me emotional and it felt really intense. Was it like that when you guys did it? Yeah, I think it was, it was, uh, it was a lot more intense than it looks. And now, actually, I, I was when, when watching it. It's so it's so cut up. It's so short. But we shot that scene for like two days or something. And this guy, me and, me and Adi, are just like stopping. Ah, hi. Who's plastic cup and pads and cardboard? And it's like we are just going for it. You see it for a second, and you're like, oh, good. But the way that it was in real life was I was like, damn, we can gas. That's gonna, that's gonna look crazy. It's gonna look awesome. And then it's just two seconds of it. I was like, we don't look that bad. <laughs> Well, you were really great, and you're missed by, by everyone, including me. Thank you so Good much. Good luck with everything. Good. I actually have some giveaways. If anybody's interested, I have some of Oscar's already. Got a couple of pops from the show, all Walking Dead related. Oh, so we got some swag here too. Some Walking Dead swag. We got some Walking Dead stuff. Um, so if anybody's interested, come on up. I only have a few things, so make sure you really want it, please. And um, once again, my name's Chris. Beast Mode NY, Deadcast. You can just catch me on YouTube, you can Facebook. It's all the same everywhere. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, everybody.